Hi, it's Sam from Lime Rate Rugby, and I was on holiday in Toulouse at the same time that Leinster were playing Toulouse. So I thought I'd pop on down and see how the match day experience was. These are my thoughts. Now, as per Catch 22 Rugby, there are five categories that we'll be rating this on game, atmosphere, refreshments, facilities, and cost. I didn't go to this game with the express idea of recording this video or anything, so I might not have the exact footage at the time, but I did record a hell of a lot of the game itself because it just blew me away in terms of atmosphere, and the game itself was one of these top of Europe teams against one of the previous best teams in Europe, so it was just really a stunning moment, and I've got, I think I've got enough footage that I think it'll be quite enjoyable, so enjoy. I should mention I'm going to be rating each of these categories out of 10, adding up the total at the end and then giving it a grade and it might get our seal of approval, it might not. Line breaks fickle that way. Uh, this looks like a nice spot to have a history lesson. Toulouse or Stade Toulousain are one of the most successful clubs in Europe. The history. Founded in 1907. They've won the first ever European Rugby Cup or Heineken Cup in the 95-96 season. They're the joint record holders with three more European Championships in 2003, 2005 and 2010. Since becoming French champions in 2012, however, there's been a small slump in silverware, but they're certainly back on the rise this season and have then never actually failed to qualify for Europe since its creation in 1995. So I'm joined to lose, wandering around, getting some sightseeing, seeing the cathedral, seeing the cobbled streets. Nearly getting run over by a guy on a moped, thinking he's Jason Bourne. You know, standard French kind of touristy stuff. Pretty fun. Then we get to the stadium and it all gets a bit intense. Suddenly the whole mood shift has happened. I'm no longer tourist zone, I'm in match day zone. And I walk up these steps and I'm just greeted with a wall of flags and noise and drums. And suddenly it really does, it feels like game day. I'm no longer in that relaxed Toulouse Southwest vibe. It's all of a sudden there appears to be a war going on and Toulouse have not come to mess about. So I'm sitting here completely surrounded in red Toulouse flags, chants going up like crazy and I've managed to nick Declan's uh, Leinster flag from Dublin, I've brought it along with me but by god it's terrifying. I'm waving the flag kind of half-heartedly in front of my face and it's, it's serious, I mean the Toulouse support is out in numbers. My girly woos there, drowning out the hordes of Frenchmen. Striking fear into the hearts of my enemies since 1992. Another brief history lesson, Toulouse is known by the locals as the Pink City due to the distinctive stone they've used to build all of their, you know, buildings, houses, stuff that's kicking about the city. Yeah, it gives off a pink sheen apparently during sunset or sunrise in the right lighting. Personally, thought it looked kind of cool, but not necessarily pink. But that's why you see, as we kick off the game right here, you can see the pink smoke still dripping across the stage. So there's kick off there, a nice turn around to have a look at the drummer, who, by the way, does not stop for 80 minutes. He just keeps on going. I'm sitting in the sun. I have got a beer. I'm quite happy. So I don't mind so much. The back of the guy's head you can see here is actually the guy that turned around and gave me half of his jug. So if you know the guy, give him a couple of quid because I owe him. As the game drifts on, Leinster really can't find a foothold. They're losing collisions and Toulouse are just making breaks here and there and you can hear from the roar of the crowd constantly that they're not going to give Leinster an inch. Toulouse are here to play and they are playing hard.
Toulouse crash over in the corner for their first try of the day. It's 11-0 and you real energy from the crowd. They're absolutely loving this. Lentz to respond after going 14-0 down with a kick at posts. And of course, Johnny Sexton doesn't miss. More cracking girly woos. I should really make that a feature. Lentz have a penalty and it's time to respect the kicker. <laughs> And that, as far as my footage is concerned, is half time and Toulouse lead 21-13, which for them is a massive win going in at a half in the lead. <laughs> Wayne Barnes there getting absolutely abused by the French fans. Betty wish he hadn't learned French now. At this point, I'm angry Barnsley's given that as it off his head. To be honest with you, I could see with seeing some of the game down this half rather than have to long lens record it down the other, which to be honest, on my phone, not very good. Overall, I'm buzzing with my seat choice. It's boiling hot in the sun. It's beautiful. That side's in the shade getting cold. I'm loving life. <laughs> Jug Guy's head makes another appearance. Can we take this moment to talk about rugby chanting? It's a little bit pathetic, we just do our own name over and over again, whether it's Exeter, whether it's Quinns, whether it's Northampton Saints, whether it's anyone. It just, we need new chants. We, we really do. If we're gonna compete with football on a chant atmosphere level, the Welsh have it right when they're singing, and the, the Irish do it all right, but we just need better chants. We really do. Do you see now the sun's gone? It's still warm though. It's about three quarters of the way through the game now. It could go either way. The French crowd is really pulling its weight, making a lot of noise, putting a lot of pressure on Wayne Barnes. The energy is still incredibly high and Toulouse, you feel, have the momentum to bring this one home. Toulouse win a massively important momentum shifting penalty, really pinning Leinster back and it looks like a hell of a long way to go if Leinster are going to come back into this one. Toulouse need to get a try still to get that win but it's looking like momentum's in their favour. To lose score with 10 minutes to go, it's 28-27 and it's absolutely tense. They were loving it, the chanting was kicking off, it was beautiful.
But after those 10 minutes gone, the relief from the crowd was palpable. And that's it. Toulouse have won. Um, Leinster have tried valiantly, but the old school kings of Europe have managed to pull through. In this battle of the titans, Toulouse have managed to pull one out of the bag. So now it's time for my match day ratings. Um, so the game itself, an absolute humdinger. Probably the best you'll see in the European pool stages. Uh, the only thing that could have got better is if it had been the European final. Sadly it wasn't. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Absolutely great day of experiences. Wouldn't have changed the actual game for the world. The only thing I would have changed is the actual level of competition. So if it had been a final, semi-final. Everything else, perfect. Atmosphere for me was a perfect 10. I went there as a neutral, as an extra fan, and the drums and the noise, everything just kind of blew me away, and it was just an awesome experience. I felt really close to the pitch. The stadium's facilities will move quickly on facilities. They're all right, they were good facilities. Managed to buy myself a nice beer, um, and obviously, I got a free one off the guy in front. Happy days. But the women's toilets were squat and drop of air, not good. Um, drops it down. Sadly, that did affect our experiences because the queue itself for that was quite long. Overall, ended up as a 7 out of 10 for facilities. So, atmosphere 10, facilities 7. And the facilities wasn't because of the pitch or anything, it was just because of the ladies' toilets. Refreshments are getting a solid 8 out of 10. Uh, bought myself a nice beer and got a free one off the guy in front as I keep on mentioning it. It was just a really nice touch from him. Um, you know, and that was about it. I didn't get much more. We didn't buy any food. Nobody bought any Coke or soft drinks. So we're not really sure. 450 euros for a beer on the top end, but not horrendous. I mean, you can expect to pay more than that in London and Twickenham and stuff like that. So I can't complain. Change from a fiver. Fair enough. Cost overall, very good. Paid 14 euros a ticket to go and sit. And you can see the view right when we get into that stadium and the view where we were sitting and all the, where all the footage is taken from. That's a good view. I mean, I paid 14 euros, possibly the cheapest tickets in the house, and I'm getting a quality view. I'm getting high quality top end European rugby entertainment. Just brilliant for cost. That's a perfect 10 out of 10 for me. I don't think there's a better cost per match ratio going on there. It's just absolutely brilliant. 10 out of 10. And so we come to add up all of these marks, and I'm giving it from Line Break Rugby, from Sav, 44 out of 50. That's a grade A, and I'm recommending that if you're in the area, if you have a possibility, go and watch Toulouse play rugby at home, listen to those drums, and enjoy that atmosphere. Line Break Rugby, seal of approval for Toulouse. Sav, out. <laughs>